Hey friends, welcome to day 23 of Inktober 2018. Today's prompt is I'm opening a toy shop for my handmade creations, hand-sewn marionette pixie crustaceans. There's a lot going on there. <laughs> there seems like there's one too many hands in that prompt. That doesn't read very well to me, but that's what I came up with, so it's too late to change it now, I guess. <laughs> okay, I um, I have to apologize. I've just come out of, I, I want to say a trance, but let's be real, it was more like a nap. Uh, I was on the couch, kind of got lost in a YouTube vortex of, uh, of all things to watch. I was watching this lady make soap, like handmade soap, and she was so creative with how she was putting all the toppings on and like, you know, piping out all this fun stuff. And I just got super into it. It was very relaxing. It was just kind of meditative and you know, maybe fell asleep. <laughs> what are you gonna do? Uh, all my work was done for today, I should mention that. So uh, that was completely fine. I'd taken all the Etsy orders to the post office this morning, bright and early this morning. They were supposed to go out yesterday. I do kind of always try to make it a mission to uh, get all my orders sorted Sunday night and take them out Monday morning. But for the last maybe month and a half even, I've done it on Monday, taken them out Tuesday morning. Uh, which just kind of irritates me because I, I kind of miss the payment cycle for Etsy. Like they ship out the money and then I have to give it back to them in fees. And it, it just kind of all doesn't work out that way. I should do it on the Sunday so that I don't have to double handle everything. Uh, but that's just my own, my own inability to commit to that on a Sunday. Also because I really want my Sundays to be a day of rest and that hasn't happened for so long. And I don't know. I could come up with a million excuses, but for real, I just, I, I didn't do it on a Sunday. I did it on a Monday. So I did that this morning. I took those out to the mail and uh, I filmed again today. I filmed my Whimsy Ween video for tomorrow, which is, uh, if you saw the last video, Frank and Frida, the, where we did the Instagram polls, I essentially took all the alternatives and did that prompt. Cause I was laughing when everyone chose those, uh, you know, it was 50, 50 shot. I put something in there that I really wanted to do. And then everything else was kind of like, Oh, you know, this is just like the alternative. <laughs> and wouldn't, you know, it luck had it that everyone chose every single alternative. I wanted to do Harajuku ween. Everyone chose, well, not everyone, but the the majority won out for Frank and Frida. I wanted to use a, a gouache or acrylics. I had to use watercolor. I wanted to do pe uh, pens and I ended up getting pencils and I wanted to use washi tape and I ended up getting scrap ephemera. So I literally got the exact opposite of what I hoped everyone would choose. And uh, as I was sitting there kind of like, oh, this is a shame. Um, and then I ended up, I had my migraine and I was trying to do that uh, Frank and Frida piece. And I was like in and out of having, you know, I felt like the migraine had happened for a few days and I feel like all the aftershocks were just like really bad headaches So I don't even know where I was at when I created that Frank and Frida thing, but I it was pretty funny and um, Yeah, so that happened and then I was sitting there kind of feeling sorry for myself thinking Oh, I just wish they had chosen everything else thinking. Oh, well, I mean I could just do that video too. Why wouldn't I? <laughs> So I did. That's what I did today. And it turned out really, really fun. I took my sweet time on it too. I took hours to do it. And uh, I think it's just because I, I tend to really slow down when I'm using gouache. I don't know what it is. I think it's, I want to be really precise and really neat. And yeah, that's just what I did. <laughs> I guess you'll see it tomorrow if you, uh, if you want to catch that, the Whimsy Ween video. So I'm really excited for that one. Super fun. Um, everyone was so complimentary about the Frank and Frida too. Honestly, I was super shocked. I had people saying that it would be nice to see more like that. And I thought, on what planet? <laughs> like, I'm gonna have to get sick again. I'm not sure. I don't know. <laughs> uh, you know what I was actually thinking? This is not what I'm going to do, by the way. I was just thinking about it. It had crossed my mind. Has anyone ever seen Drunk History? It was kind of a show where... People, like there was a person that was speaking with one of the, I guess it was a producer or maybe just a host of the show, uh, and they would drink and they would recount famous stories. So yeah, I mean, that was it. That was the premise of the show basically. But as they recounted it, they would, you know, keep drinking and uh, basically they would end up quote unquote drunk, you know, to varying degrees. Some got a little messier than others. <laughs> uh, and then that voiceover that they were telling that story and, you know, it was kind of 
all over the place. You know, they start to forget parts or things don't make sense the way that they're saying it or they're slurring. They get actors and actresses. Is that what you say now? I think it's just actors. They get actors to play that, like, that scene. It's basically being narrated by that drunk person. And I used to think it was so funny. Here's the thing. I had a problem watching it because the drunker they got, the sicker I felt for them. It was kind of like this, um, like sympathy sickness that I had every time I would, I sensed them getting a little like overwhelmed, I would start to get a little overwhelmed. So I couldn't watch it all the time. And especially if I myself was a little hungover, but, um, yeah, I thought, I wonder if there's an equivalent to that in, in art, like in mixed media art. And then I thought, oh yeah, any random night where I crack open a bottle of red wine, <laughs> Uh, you'd be surprised. I actually get a lot more calm and a lot more placid, and I think that I think things turn out a lot sweeter. The thing I have noticed that if I do have a beer, if I do enjoy a, a beverage of an evening, as I'm doing any kind of mixed media art or journaling, uh, everything seems to be kind of skewed, like it's distorted in some way. So it's it's not like it gets worse. It's just kind of off a little bit. <laughs> And, uh, and I think it just has to do with, I don't know, maybe my depth perception goes, I don't know. I do enjoy it though, it is very relaxing for me and uh, there are some pieces that I have done actually... No, I'm not gonna say it. <laughs> there is a piece, there is a piece in my journal that I did watching Love Island in Australia, maybe two bottles of wine in. And it's a piece that has come up, and you've probably seen it, and it, it became, like, it's everywhere, kind of. It's, <laughs> and that was years ago, too. Maybe I have given it away now. Did I post on Insta? That was before I even had my business Instagram. Yeah. It's so funny to me, because, like, every time I would see someone use it, I just would remember where I was and how I was when I did that. Like, that was just a mess. <laughs> Ha, huh, anyhow. Any hey? Any case? In any case? Anyway? Any who? I don't know what I want to say. My brain is still kind of scattered. I'm so sorry. I just, I was watching that lady make soaps. I, I, did I tell you I got so into it? I almost considered making soaps for my own Etsy store. But I don't, I kind of get over it really quickly. If I don't jump on something as soon as it happens, like it'll just disappear. The, um, the drive to do it. Maybe the idea won't. I kind of really got into the idea of doing pottery about two months ago and I wanted to go to the, one of these classes they have you know those they can go to plaster painting or you can like paint a teacup or something I wanted to go to one of those and maybe film a video like go and do it once and then if I had a good time like film a video or something um, but it's more for kids birthday parties which you know obviously wouldn't stop me I just wanted to go and see if I would enjoy it and I just didn't jump on it quick enough and so I kind of lost the, the spark for it. Although one night I did kind of get it back a little bit. I think on Instagram had kind of taken me through a lot of people. Uh, you know, when you get on the recommended search for, for Instagram, it took me through a lot of people just kind of throwing teapots and uh, being very mixed media textured and just being very artistic about it. And it was kind of like art meets ceramics. And I don't know, I was really here for it. So I had some air dry clay that, get this, I brought over from Australia. What was I thinking? <laughs> like, I have a whole polymer clay mini kit and air dry clay kit that I brought from Australia as if I do that. I don't think I've ever really made anything with that polymer clay. I think I tried to make a necklace once that just did not work. <laughs> <laughs> I've made a couple of things, but let's be real. I'm re I'm not I'm not good at any of it. When I got a mold once, I made a crown. That was pretty cool. But it was if you looked at it from the wrong angle, you could totally see how high I made it was. <laughs> um, no, yeah. So I had that whole thing. Anyway, I got these little wooden peg dolls that my mum had bought me. It was like kind of a paint your own Kokeshi doll set, and I covered them with air air drying like uh, like air light clay. It's paper clay, basically. It's like paper pulp that dries rock hard. Super interesting stuff. It's not great to sculpt with though, or um, kind of even mold. Like I had a really hard time doing it. It was fun while I was doing it, but I had a really hard time making anything presentable. So I did just throw the whole thing in the bin. Um, but I made a cat. <laughs> it's now probably in a landfill somewhere. I threw it, I threw it away straight away. It was so ugly. <laughs> I didn't even bother to paint it. Um, but I had to get it out of my system. Do you know what I mean? Like I, I really felt like 
you know, enough Instagram searches had recommended that I would like that. I had a look at it. I didn't love it as much as I thought I would, and I just left it. Although, I think I might like it again. My mess, my mess, <laughs> it's true though, my office was a mess when I did that. And I don't, it's not like I'm a person that can't work in a bit of chaos, but if I, if I want to just be um, loose and having fun and kind of being carefree, that's when I want everything tidy. If I have to actually do work, like if I have to ship out orders on Etsy, it doesn't matter what the office looks like. It, I could be walking over piles of, you know what I mean? Like everything and it'll be fine. I'll get it done. Uh, and, it, and it won't slow me down or anything. But if I just go into the office and it's a mess and I sit down and I think, mm, I just want to have a play with like some watercolor. I just want to do a little painting. I'll, I'll just feel like, I'll feel off about it because I know that, well, if I've got spare time to paint, I've got spare time to clean and wouldn't you enjoy it more if it was clean? And, and I totally do. When the space is all presentable, most of the time I get too tired to do anything by that point, <laughs> but I can, you know, hopefully the next day sit down and enjoy that a little bit. So yeah, I'm weird like that. Steve can only work in, in a clean space. So he's the one that usually ends up tidying up, um, which is a little awful, but I do keep the office relatively clean. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard too when you got boxes and boxes of stuff in there. I don't know if anyone um, does lots of Etsy selling. Um, I'm almost up to uh, 10,000 sales on Etsy, which I think I'm gonna have to have a party or something because that's crazy. Um, I mean, not all of them were physical, there are digital sales as well. <laughs> but still, I'm gonna celebrate. Uh, the, uh, the chaos of actually having stock, like, I didn't know, I've never thought where people keep stock. And I have a very conservative supply of stock for my Etsy store. I mean, we all know that I sell out before I can, uh, before anyone gets a chance to get anything. So uh, the fact that I have like lots of stock in there and, it's, and I don't even think it's a lot, it takes up a lot of room. Like there's a whole cupboard that's full of boxes and boxes and boxes. And then I, I never even um, thought about the fact that you would have to have shipping supplies. So there's a whole other box, never mind the boxes of product, there's a whole different box full of envelopes and mailers and bubble mailers and they're all different sizes because, uh, you know, the first time I went to ship something, I went to ship it and it was a book and then I started selling a washi tape and I thought, oh, I can't send this in that document mailer. And then, so I would have to get a bubble mailer and then I would get these small bubble mailers and then someone would order like a postcard set and a washi tape. And I thought, well, I can't just send that like that in a bubble mailer, the postcards will get squished. So I'd have to put that inside a document mailer and then put that inside a bubble mailer. And my goodness, I mean, I think I've got it down to a T now. I'm not gonna jinx myself, touch wood or something, but like, I mean, I have everything. I, I'm my own UPS store here. USPS? They're both the same thing, I guess. <laughs> I'm my own staples. Although I kind of live for it though, you know what I mean? Like I feel like at school, my best friend and I would always just pretend that we were secretaries. We had this free period where um, in school, where everyone else was doing another elective. I was supposed to be doing Japanese by uh, correspondence, but sometimes I would just get sidetracked because she had a free period the same time I did. <laughs> and I mean, we were not getting anything done at that point. <laughs> and uh, we would just sit there and the librarian was so funny too, like she was half in on it, so it was fine. My school was really not that strict. <laughs> we would sit at the computers in the library and pretend that we were just working in an office, like just working admin, just bashing away at a keyboard, not actually typing anything, not doing anything. And um, yeah, that was just kind of a full fantasy for us. We would just take our Vogues to school and go to the photocopiers and just photocopy them all and pretend like that was our, you know, that was our work for the day. I think in, I think in some like alternative universe, my best friend and I should just be secretaries at a school or something. <laughs> I think that would literally complete my life. You know what I mean? Like that's just, that's a, a full fantasy. Maybe I'll do that when I'm older. Because uh, I love office supplies. I love anything kind of clerical and administrative and I love to shuffle papers and check things off and just feel very fancy around lots of paper goods. <laughs> Anyone else out there like that? <laughs> All right, I'm gonna leave it at that before I get uh, any further into this crazy Yeah, that's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, check out Whimsy Ween tomorrow where I do the uh, Harajuku Ween video and I'll also have day 24 of Inktober up for you tomorrow as well. So double upload day. Have a nice day. Bye.